Do you want to make your next connection in Atlanta's airport a breeze but aren't a frequent flyer? This video is for you. You'll see exactly how to navigate the concourses and ride the train so you can travel like a pro. I'll showcase a few of the airport's hottest spots so you'll know where to eat and hang out on a longer layover. And I'll even reveal how long it takes to get from one end of the airport to the other so you don't have to worry about your next connection in Atlanta. Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from Greenergrass.com. Right now, I'm at Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport. Recently, I've gotten a number of requests for a little bit more information about what to do if you're connecting through this airport. So whether you've got a short time or a long time here at ATL, let me show you around. I needed to get from my home in Greensboro, North Carolina to Little Rock, Arkansas. Like a lot of pairs of cities, not enough people travel between these two to warrant a nonstop flight. As a result, I'll be connecting through Atlanta. And that presents the question, what do you do in the Atlanta airport? Well, that depends on how much time you have. So let's get down there. My flight from Greensboro to Atlanta was only about an hour and was smooth. But even a smooth flight can mean anxiety if you have a connection. So let's take a look at how to make a transfer as simple as possible. First, let's take a look at how the Atlanta airport is laid out. It's got a series of seven parallel concourses. They go from T on the west side to F on the east and they're all connected with a series of underground walkways and trains. We'll explore them all, as well as how long it takes to get from one end to the other when we get on the ground. Now, be sure to keep an eye on your airline's app. You can usually access them online using the Wi-Fi on board for free. Take a look at the arrival gate, and then look at your departure gate. You can also access airports maps for hubs like Atlanta. Thankfully, that was pretty easy, and this uneventful flight was on time. Next up is to figure out exactly where we're going next. And the best way to do that is up here on this monitor. So let me show you that. These monitors include all the connecting flight information for the passengers on your flight. In my case, I've got to make it all the way from here at gate D13 over to A34. You'll also find boards with up-to-date information throughout the concourses here in Atlanta. Make your way to the center of the concourse where you'll find elevators and escalators down to the trains. Check the signs to be sure you're getting on the right train going in the correct direction. Just look for your concourse label, it's easy to see. You'll hop on board. I'll stay on for three stops to get over to concourse A. The trains run about every 90 seconds and there's a countdown clock above each door. It takes about three minutes to walk between concourses, so if you're just a single concourse away, you might skip the train. But more about that in just a bit. Anyway, when you get off the train, again, follow the signs. Now the bad news for me is that A34 is the very last gate at the end of this concourse. Now there are bathrooms throughout each concourse, but I've got no time for that now. Let's see how quickly we can make this connection. Now, it's worth saying, I'd booked a long layover today so I could make this video, but the next flight coming into Atlanta from Greensboro offers only an hour and 11 minute connection to Little Rock, so let's see how quickly I can get there. So that took me right at 12 minutes to make that trip uh, from where we came in right here to A34. Now, of course, I've got a longer layover, so if you've got a shorter one, that's pretty much what it's going to look like. You're going to make your way to gate as quickly as you can. So what do you say we take a look around Atlanta to see how you might spend some of your time if you find yourself with a connection that's not quite so tight? The minimum connection time at an airport is the shortest connection allowable at that, at that airport. It depends on how busy the place is, all kinds of factors. The minimum connection time here at Atlanta is 35 minutes. I've had plenty of, uh, of connections here that are that long, and it's possible. Obviously, the more time, the better, but 35 minutes is doable. I found this information kiosk, which looked to hold a lot of the airport's secrets. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it to work. User error, I'm, I'm sure. Best advice on any kind of a layover in Atlanta is just, or any airport, just keep an eye on the signs. They'll usually tell you exactly where to go. Just trust the signs. To see our top four tips for making connections, head to greenergrass.com slash connections. I'm on the C concourse now, and as you can see, there's uh, there really is only there are only two restaurants open, so the lines are pretty long. Uh, even though this is not a peak travel time, wish more places would open up. Hopefully soon. I'm sure the airport is working on that right now. But if you cannot find a restaurant, you will find vending machines on each concourse, along with water fountains, which you can use to fill up your own water bottle if you'd like. And don't miss Suzanne's favorite, Shake Shack. If you ever lose your way uh, here or anywhere, uh, for that matter, in terms of airports, just find somebody with a uniform. There's a pretty good chance they'll be able to give you a hand, point you in the right direction, and get you going. But ultimately, the best bit of advice I can give you is to simply get familiar with the airport you're transiting through before you get there. Spend a little time with a map, 
just to understand the layout and the features. Every concourse here at the Atlanta airport has uh, some kind of a food court and there'll be quick serve restaurants as well as uh, uh, some kind of a sit down option too in most places. Over on Concourse E, you'll find my favorite quick serve restaurant, Panda Express, along with the best sit down restaurant in all of the airport. It's one flew south and if you're hungry and have a bit of time, this is a can't miss establishment. Back on Concourse A, you'll find a P.F. Chang's. There's some nice views from up here. Also on Concourse A, you'll find Gordon Biersch. Now, my brother-in-law recommended it to me as one of the best places to hang out and spot planes, and he's right. But not today. I have another mission. And for that, I'm heading over to Concourse T. That's the farthest west here at the airport. I've got such a long layover, in fact, that I'm going to walk from here at a T1 all the way to F1. That's about as far as you can walk in the Atlanta airport, so let's see how long it takes. My trek started at 4.10, and I'm going to take this as slowly as possible. I won't use the train or the moving sidewalks. I'll even stop along the way to take in some of the sights. I wonder how long it's going to take me. I'm guessing it's about 30 minutes, uh, but we'll find out together. Now this, of course, is not something anyone would typically do, but I just want to see what the worst possible scenario could be. That is, you come into the farthest possible gate, and then connect to the other farthest possible gate, just for the sake of, of research, you know? Now, if you need it, you can get help from Delta's customer service team here at these areas marked in green They're in every concourse. I could take the train, but that seems like cheating. I want to see what the absolute maximum exposure is that you have here in the Atlanta airport. How long is this walk? I mean, you're not likely to come into T1 and then leave from F1 if you have a tight connection. I guess it could happen. So let's find out how long this walk is. No automated people movers on this urban hike. Here, along the walkway between Concourse T and A, you'll find some magnificent sculptures. It's been 10 minutes and I'm just at uh, Concourse A, so I think I might have uh, been a little bit off on a 30 minute uh, guesstimate, but we'll find out. There's a little respite between A and B. Join me as we enter the rainforest. How cool is this thing? Fourteen minutes to Concourse B. That's one four. Fourteen minutes to Concourse B. It's all about a history lesson here between B and C. So there's an old joke here in the South. A uh, guy goes to his preacher and he says, uh, "Am I going to heaven or am I going to hell?" The preacher says, "I don't know, but either way, you're going to connect in Atlanta." So we're about seventeen minutes, and I'm stepping into C. That's the halfway mark by my uh, by my calculations. After seeing art from Zimbabwe and then a rainforest and a history lesson. C to D seems a little bare. What do you think they should put down here? Let me know in the comments. What should the Atlanta airport add to this space? It's 20 minutes to Concourse D. 20 minutes to get from uh, all the way to D. It seems to take, on average, about three or four minutes to get from the train station at the center of one concourse to the train station at the uh, center of the next one. Now, there's no way to walk underneath Concourse E, so instead, you'll have to make your way back upstairs and walk through that concourse. I guess COVID tests at airports all over the world are here to stay for at least a while. I hope it's not uh, jerkish of me to say, uh, but uh, public service announcement, please don't stop in the middle of a walkway in an airport. Soon you'll head back downstairs and we're almost there now. This is probably my favorite escalator in the Atlanta airport. Just a little mini guy, a little short, little short guy, already almost off. That's 38 minutes on the nose without running, using a moving sidewalk or the train. I guess we can see where they got the 35 minute minimum connection time. I mean, uh, look, I dilly dallied a fair amount, uh, took my time, uh, but 38 minutes on the nose, here we are. Now, let me show you inside my favorite Delta Sky Club here at the Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport. It's here in Concourse F and to get inside, you need a membership. Now you can do that a number of ways. The easiest, of course, is to get a credit card. Now, I'm not in the business of selling credit cards, uh, but if you do want to get access to Sky Club, that's one way to do it, or you can earn a certain level of status. But if you don't want to do that, there's also another club you can just buy a day pass to. That one is this, the club at ATL. And here's some footage from inside from a few years ago. Now, anyone can buy a day pass here, and it's even associated with a popular priority pass program. Now, every concourse in Atlanta has at least one Sky Club, and this one is arguably the best. Definitely my favorite. Now, accessing a Sky Club requires a membership through Delta, and there are clubs on each concourse. There are even United and American clubs back in Concourse T, but this is my favorite in the whole airport. 
And one of the main reasons for that is that it's just about the only place airside that you can step outside, and fresh air, even filled with the smell of jet fuel, is pretty nice. This is why it's my favorite. You still want more to do after all that. There's plenty of shopping as well. Just a little too big for the overhead bin. Don't forget to head to greenergrass.com slash connections to see our four tips and let us know in the comments what other best practices you have for connecting here in Atlanta. Well, it's time to hop on this flight to Little Rock. Uh, thanks so much for exploring the Atlanta airport with me. If you're interested in seeing more airports, let me know in the comments between now and the next time. See you in the airport.